I'm Mary, my dog is Cowboy, my bus is Max, and on this channel we meet people, go places, and do things. Greetings from Columbus, Ohio, which is where I am. It's not where I was planning to be. I was planning to be in Dayton, Ohio at the Cracker Barrel restaurant, and I didn't eat all day yesterday because I was going to save my appetite for the Cracker Barrel, but I am waking up in this shell station in Columbus, Ohio um, because of a turn of events. Um, and if you saw the last video, you saw, yeah, Max stalled out on the ramp when I was getting off the freeway to go get fuel. So here's the story. Remember I posted the video saying, am I gonna make it? They said I need shocks, blah, blah, blah. Well, I didn't need shocks. Turned out that the bus had been outside and the guy didn't know it had been outside, so there was moisture on the um, shocks underneath and he thought that that meant they were leaking, but then when he checked, they weren't leaking, they were just wet. So I didn't need shocks. But um, they did uh, But he, they did find a few leaks and stuff and they fixed those up, but they couldn't find the initial problem I brought it in for, which is that it was um, stalling out. It stalled out twice. It was not like it was doing all the time. That's why I had brought it in and they never found the problem, but it wasn't happening anymore, so no big deal. And then I embarked on this journey and um, it's been great so far. Then I went to get fuel and I went up the ramp and at the stoplight it stalled out. Normally when something like that happens, I immediately go to, oh, I'm out of fuel because my fuel gauges don't work. And uh, before I figured that out, I ran out of fuel a lot because I didn't know that I was out of fuel, but once I figured out, oh, this is actually giving me inaccurate information, now I just go by the mileage and I'm usually fine. But I don't usually use my rear tank. But now I believe that my rear tank is only 13 gallons. So my mechanic, or my old mechanic, who's not my mechanic anymore because he sucks, um, but he swore to me that both tanks are 18 gallons. I don't think it's 18 gallons. I think the rear one is 13 gallons and the front one is 18 gallons, but, I'm not a mechanic and he is, so I took his word for it and so far it's been working out fine for me on this trip, but I think that might have just been luck and I think that I might just be out of fuel. So I actually subscribe to two roadside assistance programs. I pay like two premiums every year for them because if one of them screws up, the other one might get it right. That's kind of how I think. And with this vehicle, it's always hard to get it right because it's so old. And it's a freaking school bus, you know? So I have Good Sam and I have, um, I don't, I don't know what it's called. Ro Safe, Safe Ride, I think it's called. It's, um, put out by, it's the official one that comes with the, um, escapees RV club. So, so first I call Good Sam and Good Sam says, well, we refuse to even take the call unless you call a police officer to, to, to direct traffic. I'm like, but... I'm not in an unsafe place, but they said, well, you're blocking a lane. I told them I was blocking a lane. If you're blocking a lane, you have to have a cop there and we won't even help you. So I was like, oh, screw this. And I hung up and then I called the second one and they were so much easier to deal with. They seemed so nice. And, and I said to the girl, it's really important that you accurately describe the vehicle they're picking up because they usually end up saying it's a 4350 and that's a van. My, this is a bus, not a van. You have to tell them it's a Ford E350 cutaway school bus. You have to tell them it's a school bus. You have to tell them it's 20 feet long and 10 feet tall. You have to tell them all this because otherwise they'll send the wrong truck and I'll be waiting for another three hours for a second truck to come. And she's just, oh yeah, I totally understand. And she seemed like she knew she, she was so polite and so customer servicey and all that, but no. She told the tow company, all she sent them was 4350. And so they sent a, a medium duty truck and it needs a heavy duty truck. Oh, excuse me, I've only slept for about two hours, max. Sorry, Max, I wasn't talking to you. But after we figured out that the tow wasn't gonna work, I said, you know, let me just try something. And I whipped out my handy jump starter. The guy was like, well, it's not gonna take a jump. I mean, why would you think there's a dead battery? I said, no, I don't think the battery's dead, but I think maybe I cranked it so much that if it wanted to start, it couldn't. So I put the charger on there and it worked. I started the bus, which was great. And then he goes and takes my clips off of the off of the, the battery and hands me the battery and shuts the hood. I don't think anything about it, okay? So now I drive around the block and into the shell station here 
and it immediately stalls out again as soon as we get into the station. Now, that could be for some complicated reason or could be for a simple reason, which is I think I was still on that rear tank. So if that rear tank is 13 gallons, then yeah, I was still on the tank that was actually out of fuel. So I thought, no problem. I'll just switch it over to the other tank and jump start it again. And when I get it started, I'll drive it over to the pump. But the tow truck driver had shut my hood wrong with the, you know, the prop pole that holds the lid up. Um, it has to be going this way and he shut it with it going this way which makes the hood stick and the last time it took a crowbar to get it open so I carry a ton of tools but I don't carry a crowbar so I'm walking up to random strangers in a gas station in Columbus Ohio saying hey you got a crowbar hey you got a crowbar anybody got a crowbar and of course people think I'm a psycho so nobody had a crowbar they might have had one but they weren't gonna give it to the psycho so I've been trying for I tried for like I tried for like an hour and a half to open that thing and get into his, but I just fell asleep just then. Did you see that? Um, I tried to get, wow, I'm having a hard time keeping my eyes open. I don't even know what I just said. What did I say? What did I say? Okay, so... We've got your... Uh, Okay, I can't get back where I was. I was doing pretty good, too. So I couldn't get the hood open. The other roadside assistants, meanwhile, called me back and said, hey, what's going on? And I told her, and she said, why don't I send you somebody to do a jump? And I said, well, I don't really need a jump. I have a jump pack. And she said, oh, well, let me send someone to do a jump anyway. And I thought, that's really a good idea because they're gonna have to open the hood to give me a jump, right? So at least they'll help me with that. So. So this guy shows up at about 4.30 a.m. in a Honda Civic with one of those old school jump packs. You know, like it's big, but it's not big. Like the battery isn't big, but the unit is chunky, right? So he shows up with one of those. And the first thing I says, oh, I don't think that's really gonna work because, you know, I don't think that thing puts out enough charge to do anything to this bus. But okay, my real reason for having him here is that I want him to help me get the hood open anyway. So I said, well, here's the thing. Before we can jump him, we have to get the hood open and the hood's really, really stuck. Now, remember, I've been working on this for two hours. Okay, this dude walks over and like Hercules, he just goes, boom, and it's open. Just pulls it up and it's open. Just like that. So, great. Now Hercules got the, the thing open. So now we got to do his, try his lame jumpers and they're probably not going to work. And they didn't work. So then he says, well, we can do it with my car. And I'm thinking, you're Honda Civic? He insisted on trying it, so we tried it. I was just, okay, thank you for your help, but I'm okay now. So he left, and then I whipped out my real jumper pack, my little one that kicks ass that I've talked about before. The, the link will be in the, the comments. I think everyone should get this. But the battery pack was down to 40%, okay? You're not supposed to operate it below 40%. So I had to charge it. So I've been charging it all night. And um, I mean, I say all night. I slept for two hours. I've been charging it while I sleep. Let me say that. And it's now at like 95.5%, which is amazing. That'll do it for sure. But now... Meanwhile, my other roadside assistants had called me back and offered to set up a mobile mechanic for today, which is all set up, and I have a mobile mechanic coming in an hour. So I think at this point I'm just going to wait for the mechanic to show up. This is Joe. Joe is pretty much exactly the same age as the bus itself. Right? How long have you been doing this, Joe? Uh, 11 years. I'm 28, and I started okay. at 18. That's pretty good. Yeah. Well, no, I'm 29 now. I forgot my birthday was in December. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> so how come you know old trucks like this? Um, I just kind of picked up on it myself. Cool. Well, we're very lucky that Napa had this filter because nobody else did. Yep, all I needed was a fuel filter. I'm not really sure why they couldn't find that at the shop back in Massachusetts, but Joe's taking care of it. Whoa, Whoa okay. Joe got a little nervous on camera there. Yep, yep. Well, camera shy. Camera shy, that's, that's right. I got no worries, no worries got me now. I got no problems, no problems I can see. Well, thanks to Joe, Max is all fixed up. Thank you, Joe. And I'll be getting on my way in a couple minutes. If you want to see what happened last time, click here. If you want to see what happens next, click here. I got, I got no worries.